Okay, so we're going to continue solving quadratics today. But before we do that, we're going to review on how to simplify a radical because radicals with the two methods that we're doing today. The inverse method, so the opposite of squaring is square root, so we need to look at radicals for square roots, and then the quadratic formula. So I'm going to put up three radicals, the square root of 8, the square root of 48, and the square root of 72. And we need to simplify those. So you might want to write down your perfect squares. Uh, 1 times 1, 1, 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 3, 9, 4 times 4, 16, 5 times 5, 25, 6 times 6, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, and we could keep going. And what I like about Delta Math to start is there's a guided practice section. So it already sets up your two radicals. So when you're looking to see which one of these numbers goes into the radicand, the number underneath, I'm going to put a line on where 8 falls. So 8 falls here, so I only need to check 4 and 1. And really, we don't ever want to use 1 because if we divide anything by 1, we get the number back or itself. So 4 does go in 8. 48 falls here. So check 36. Is that a factor? No. 25? No. 16? Yes. And then 72 falls here. 64? No. 49? No. 36? Yes. So 72 is 36 times 2. 48 is 16 times 3 and 8 is 4 times 2. So final answers, all you do is take the uh, square root of the perfect squares, which we always write first, so that we have that coefficient out in front of the radical. So this is 2 radical 2, this is 4 radical 3, and then this would be 6 radical 2 as final answers. Okay, so let's actually to discuss, because I see there's a section of rational versus irrational. Well, I like to think of it in terms of the decimals. So I'm going to bring up the graphing calculator and I'm going to type all these in. 2 radical 2, 4 radical 3, and 6 radical 2. Now since all of these decimals, right, they do keep going but the calculator cannot write all of the, de the numbers in the decimal because they go on forever. So it does actually round this last digit if necessary. There's no repetition, okay? So they go on and on and on with no repetition. They would be irrational. So irrationals don't end or repeat. Or rational, they end okay so they don't end or let's say don't repeat because that's kind of confusing so they either end um, an example would be like one half or 0 0.5 as a decimal or they repeat so like one third is 0 0.3333333 so that is a repeating decimal so in two, the root word of ratio means a fraction. So this is a one to two ratio, one to three ratio. Okay? Now on to solving. So the first solving quadratics with square roots, level one. So the first example, uh, let me see if I can find one of the easier ones. Oops, I just passed one. right here. So 14 minus x squared equals 8. Okay, so again we want the x squared to be positive so I am going to add the x squared over. So we get 14 equals 8 plus x squared. We're looking to isolate the x squared so subtract 8 and we get x squared equals 6. Okay, once you isolate that x squared, now we do the inverse operation. So the opposite of squaring is the square root. Okay, uh, square root of x squared is just x, so it gets rid of that. I just undid the square, it gets rid of the exponent. And then we look to see if we can simplify 6. Now the only factors of 6 are 1 times 6 and 2 times 3, none of which are perfect squares. So my answer is radical 6, 
but we have to include the plus minus out front because we know that when we square a negative or square a positive, we end up with, right, um, the radical. So if I wanted to check the square root of 6, take that and square it, we do get 6, good. Square root of, actually we want the negative square root of 6, square that, and we also get 6. So you see they both work. So you want to make sure you include that plus or minus. Okay, now let's move on to uh, the next problem. So we'll call this example number one. Example number two just involves some parentheses. X minus 10 squared plus 18 equals 35. So in this case, I don't want to isolate the x squared, but isolate what is being squared, which is the x minus 10. So to get that by itself, we need to subtract the 18 first. Okay, we want to do that from both sides. And I'm left with x minus 10 squared equals 17. Then we're going to take the square root to get rid of the square. And we're left with x minus 10 equals, again, don't forget, plus minus. Now, 17 cannot be simplified, so we leave it radical 17. And then add the 10. And we get x equals, now I could write it as plus minus 17 plus 10. That is right, but we actually, it looks much better if it's 10 first plus or minus radical 17. Okay, now say for example we had an equation, I'll do one more, that was just x minus 2 squared equals 12. Now I picked 12 because when I take the square root, again because it's this binomial that's being squared, not just an x, 12 we can simplify. Okay, so this ends up being x minus 2 equals, put in your plus minus, and then off to the side, I like to simplify the 12. So setting it up, it's going to be 4 times 3, 4 being the perfect square, and then that's going to be 2 radical 3. So I like to simplify again off to the side, and then write the simplification there, and then add the 2. It ends up being x equals 2 plus or minus 2 radical 3. Okay? Now on to the quadratic formula. So before we do some quadratic formula, let's just write it. And I am going to attach some videos with some tunes to help you remember it. It is on your reference sheet, though. So you won't need to um, memorize it for the Algebra 2 regions or geometry. So it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root and b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And much of this we're going to do right on the calculator. Okay? So example number four. Let me go to that section to finish for today. All right, let's do x squared plus 6x plus 4 equals 0. Now, back to the formula. Oops, I put that paper underneath here. We have, you know, the a's, b's, and c's. So this goes back to the first day with um, it being in standard form. So remember, in standard form, it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So the a, the b, and the c are the numbers. So it's good to identify those numbers first. So here, a is 1, because there's a 1 in front, even though I don't write it. The b is a 6, and the c is a 4. Okay? So it's x equals negative b, so negative 6, plus or minus b squared, so 6 squared minus 4ac, so 4ac with no symbol means multiplication. 
So 4 times 1 times 4 all over 2a. So our answer is negative 6 plus or minus. Type this whole line in under your calculator. Okay, just as you see it. So 6 squared minus 4 parentheses, 1 parentheses, 4, and we get 20. All over 2. Now, um, if it wanted the answer in decimal form, okay, we could type this whole thing in and get the two decimals. Okay, it might also say in what simplified form. So again, we have to look at the radical, and off to the side, I like to simplify it. 20 is 4 times 5, or 2 radical 5. So if I rewrite it, so x equals negative 6, one answer is with the plus. So plus 2 radical 5 all over 2, and the other answer is negative 6 minus 2 radical 5 all over 2. And then when we simplify it, we can divide both terms. So negative 6 over 2 is a negative 3, plus the 2's cancel, radical 5. And again, negative 3 minus the 2's cancel, radical 5. So together, this could be written, since it's the same except for one has a plus or a minus, it could be written as negative 3 plus or minus radical 5. Okay? It might also work out, too, where this number ends up being a perfect square. Okay? So if it's decimal form, you just type this into your calculator to see what the decimals are. But say it looked like at this step, something like, let's say, negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 81 all over 2. Right? So we could actually write one root, I don't have much room so I'm going to use the arrows, is negative 4 plus 9 over 2, right, because the square root of 81 is 9, and then negative 4 minus 9 over 2. So negative 4 plus 9 is 5 over 2, so our answer ends up being rational instead of irrational. Okay, rationals are fractions, and then negative 13 over 2, and we can't simplify those fractions. So when there's a perfect square, we end up with rational roots. When there's not a perfect square like 20, we end up with irrational roots. And again, if it wants the decimals, you just type these in your calculator to get the decimal. And that's it uh, for today. Make sure if you need any help, you ask either Mr. Hart or myself for some help before your quiz tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye-bye.